Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today we have Ryan Levesque who's one of the legends of copywriting and marketing. He is a master at setting up marketing funnels that convert cold traffic into customers which is what everyone wants. He's the founder of the Survey Funnel Formula. Now he's used this exact formula to generate just brace yourself for a second. These are big numbers. 2.8 million leads, 175,000 customers in 17 markets. And that's not over 10 years. That's in 23 months alone. And I saw Ryan, we went to an event this past weekend. And, you know, I was talking to a few high level entrepreneurs. When I'm talking to them, you know, I'm asking, what's working? What are you doing? And they kind of, one person in particular kind of put their head down and you get this whisper and you know it's going to be something really good. And uh, like, you know, I started working with, with Ryan Levesque and he's doing the survey funnel formula. One of those whispers that, you know, he kind of reveals something and he doesn't necessarily want everyone to know about it. So Ryan, I'm really excited to have you. Thank you for joining me. Jeremy, it's awesome to connect. It was great to meet you at Titans of Direct Response and I'm looking forward to continuing the great conversation that we started. You know, since this is Inspired Insider, um, I want you to talk about one of your most painful moments in business and how you, what inspired you? What were you thinking about that motivated you to push forward through that? Because I think, you know, a lot of people, we go through these things and I uh, want to know kind of what you were thinking about to, to get through those, some of those tough times. I'll give you two. So the first goes back to why I went into business for myself in the first place. And, um, Every time I tell the story, I start to get emotional about it. But basically, um, I was in my mid-20s, and I reached a point where I had achieved everything that I wanted to achieve. I, was, I had the job that I wanted at AIG. I was making the kind of money that I wanted. I was in this environment. I had 24 people reporting to me. I was running this entire division. I was, you know, spoke Chinese nearly fluently, and I had I'd achieved everything that I wanted to, and it was like this empty feeling. And I was inspired for some reason to basically – Stay up for 24 hours, and I wrote this like 20-page letter. This is embarrassing, but I'm going to tell the story anyway. 20-page letter that I just had, I wrote it to my mom, but it was really to myself. And basically, it was that I had this flame inside of me, and there was like this, this flame that was almost uh, uh, ignite, you know, almost extinguished, almost like when you see a fire and there's like that one last right, ember. Right. And I said that if I don't do something about this now, that that flame is going to be extinguished forever. And the flame was the fact that I had something more inside of me to build something bigger. And I wrote this huge letter, and I wrote it to my mom, and I, and I told my mom, don't freak out. But I just wanted to let her know that um, in the next 18 months, I was going to be quitting my job. I was going to be leaving this entire career behind, and I was going to be doing something. And I didn't know what it was yet. I hadn't figured everything out, but I had to do this. And I said, you just have to trust me on this. Um, that I'm making the right decision, that, that I had to, you know, to, to achieve that, um, that thing. And the thing that um, uh, really rang true to me was, was, was turning 30. For some reason, it was like when I had turned 30, if I had waited until I turned 30 at this time, that it would be too late, that at that time I would have had kids and settled down and I would be locked into this path where I right. couldn't escape the golden handcuffs of, of the corporate job that I had. Um, but I said that letter, I wrote that letter, wrote down my intention, set it aside, and as these things happened, within 18 months, I'd left the company and it started my first six-figure six business. That was the first thing. So it was that, that, that impending turning 30 that, that really struck me. The second thing happened more recently, which is when I um, uh, uh, you know, almost died, um, when I fell into diabetic ketoacidosis, found out that I was almost slipped into a coma and found out that I was a type 1 diabetic. And it was when I came to terms with my own mortality. At the time, my first son was, was only about six months old. Hmm. And um, it was just uh, a real reality check um, that, um, and again, I'm going to be emotional talking about it, but yeah. it was... Um, you were not around forever, you know. Yeah. And um, it's a tough, t tough thing, especially when you have a young child and you're like, I want to be there for their wedding and for other events. Yeah. You know. And and if you're gonna do what you're gonna do, like it's now, it's today. Like there's no like no someday. Like you know, get your ass in gear and just make it happen. Right. Um, 
and and be that that role model that you want to be for your kids for everybody else and right. and for me more than anything else it's what I wanted to do I wanted to you know every day I look at like would my son be proud of me looking back and, right. and I try to do that for that reason so it's it's providing for my family um, but once you reach a certain point I'm at a I've reached a, fortunately a level of success where the, the money it's it's a score now like I have I have everything that I could possibly want now it's more about doing the right thing yeah. changing people's lives as, as woo woo as it sounds it's true and setting that example so that my kids will you know there's this thing that I've always been taught that people grow up and they look at their father in one of two ways and I'll leave people with this yeah. especially for the men in the audience people either want to be the exact opposite of who their father is or they want to be exactly who their father is it's just this thing that we have especially men um, looking to our father and and, uh, and I want my kids to look at me and say like I, he's my role model I want to be like him and so yeah. that more than anything else today is what motivates me to, to pursue excellence and to push the envelope and to keep the foot on the accelerator and to keep going and, 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 and kind of go down that path so hopefully I didn't mean to get emotional at the end I, like that no, but it's, uh, no. it's the truth and I hope yeah. it's, uh, it's guiding for people who kind of listen to this yeah no I appreciate you sharing and the scary part is that is such a big thing to push you forward that you're just going to keep going so absolutely. yeah so ryan thank you so much it's been it's awesome. absolutely amazing it's one of the best it, it's funny someone had, i, I want to give a shout out to you before we wrap up because at titans of direct response this is like the creme de la creme of our industry i told people that the people on stage speaking any one of them could have been a keynote speaker at any normal event and the people in attendance were all speaker quality people so it was like the bar was raised one level so these are people who are the creme de la creme and someone in the audience and i, I don't remember it was brian or brian kurtz who ran the event or someone else basically said jeremy put together the best interview that he had ever uh, had. And I just want to give a shout out to you because I've done a lot of interviews myself and for whatever, you know, whatever it is, if it's your tone, the questions that you ask, your style, I feel like you're able to really drag out some true gold. And I just want to give you a shout out as an interviewer because I think you've become really a master of your craft and I applaud you for what you're doing. I think you've found what you are, you know, what's your unique ability, what's, what you, you're destined to, to really be the best in the world at. So I just wanted to oh. hats off to you and give you a shout out, my oh, man. Thanks, Ryan. I'm humbled to hear that. It's, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you.